Hello everyone, ChatGPT Atlas has just officially came out, which is a web browser straight from ChatGPT and OpenAI. So it's really cool. It has ChatGPT built in. I'll go and show you how to do it. It's only currently available on macOS right now, and it will eventually probably come out in future you know, operating systems. They've already said it is, but right now it's only on Mac and only on macOS 26. So it's only the current generation of macOS, which is kind of crazy. So make sure you have macOS Tahoe or macOS 26. It does not work in any version below that. Now, you can make your way over to chatgpt.com slash atlas, and it will take you here. So you can come right here into the Atlas website, and you'll be able to come into this particular page. So click on download for macOS and download this on your macOS 26 device. When you first log in, it's gonna tell you to go ahead and do a bunch of login information. So you wanna log into your ChatGPT account and you wanna go into that and basically, you know, log into ChatGPT. And when you first log into it, it's probably gonna take you into a page that looks something like this. Now, there's a lot of issues and a lot of bugs and I'm already experiencing one, but this is basically what the web browser looks like. It's pretty basic. In the top, you'll have your X button, all that stuff, a back button, a forward button, and a refresh button you'll have this little tab button in the top left, which if you click on it, it looks like it brings you right inside of, I guess it should have brought me into the you know sidebar right here, but I guess it opens up the sidebar. You can see it looks just like ChatGPT. So if you minimize it, then it's basically just a web browser. But if you click on this tab bar, you can see it brings you right into a style that looks just like ChatGPT. You can go in and click on a new chat if you wanna open up a new chat within ChatGPT, search, library, archived chats, codecs, GPTs, and a new project. Or you can just minimize this and just kind of move it out of the way. Now, you can see sometimes I click on things and it doesn't work. It's because it's still a work in progress. Now, if I click on new chat, it will actually open up ChatGPT just like this. And this is probably what it's going to look like as soon as you open up ChatGPT uh, Chat Atlas. So the first time you open it up, it's gonna look something like this. So here you can go ahead and start, you know, typing ChatGPT you know, requests right here, or you can even input a URL. So even if I just put in like google.com just like this, I can tap into it and it does actually take me right into google.com. Or if I put in a search like a ChatGPT request, it would go ahead and put in that. Now in the top right, so this is another cool thing. It works just like any other web browser. I am trying to minimize this left side. You can see it's not working for me. But if I go ahead and just kind of, you know, click in, let's just say like ChatGPT, for example, and I just go into like OpenAI's website, what's really, really cool is that it does actually go through and I do have ChatGPT kind of built in on the side. So what's really awesome is, is let's say I'm on this website, right? Well, if I want to invoke ChatGPT, I can use ChatGPT right inside this website by clicking on the Ask ChatGPT button in the top right corner. If I tap here, look, I get right like a mini version of ChatGPT right inside of the web browser. So now I can say, okay, let's go. And I can actually just start writing requests right inside of ChatGPT. And that's pretty much all I'm gonna have to do. So now I can just actually start writing things about ChatGPT, specifically about this web page that I'm on. So this allows me to make actual specific requests on websites that I'm on. So if I even type in like what's this website about, let's see if I even spelled it right. It'll go and tell me exactly what this particular website's about right here. And it's actually really, really cool. Now you can clearly see I didn't spell it right. And there's gonna be a lots of issues and lots of bugs, but you can see it does actually tell me that I'm looking at a website about OpenAI and so on and so forth. So that is something that's really, really cool. And you can minimize this by clicking on this, you know, switch chat button, or you can delete chat. You can also minimize it by clicking on the Ask GPT button right there. In the top right corner, you'll have this login button, which will show you kind of a little bit more about your ChatGPT instance. So if you want, you can upgrade your plan of ChatGPT, bookmarks, downloads, password settings, uh, your standard settings option. You can go into incognito mode by clicking onto the incognito mode option right there. And it looks, it looks very much like uh, Google Chrome. So it's almost the exact same thing as Google Chrome to be completely honest with you. But I do think over time, they're probably gonna make it look a lot nicer. This is honestly kind of nice too. You have this little slider, which changes the accent bar color right up here. But that's kind of Atlas, you know? I think it's kind of cool, you know, it has its own thing. Will I switch over to it? Probably not yet. Maybe in the future I might want to, 
But as of right now, it's not really, you know, something that I plan on switching over to, especially because it's only available on, uh, you know, macOS right now. So uh, macOS, you know, specifically macOS Tahoe. But that's basically, you know, uh, ChatGPT Atlas. Do you plan on using it? I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, tell me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, so long.